Hello everyone and welcome back to another UCGC video. My name is Chadling and today we're going to talk about something a little different in this deep dive. Today I want to talk to you about game developer responsibility and the pitfalls that we as gamers can fall into because of their shenanigans. So gamers and game devs have a precariously balanced relationship, but arguably the gamers themselves are more important. Therefore, game devs should at least have the responsibility of meeting our expectations. So what happens when they forsake their responsibilities and fail us? The gamer and game dev relationship is fairly simple at its core. Without any gamers, there's no market for game devs to make games for. And without game devs, there are no games to make for consumers. Now, ultimately, I think this means that gamers as consumers do have more power and more value in this relationship. As we invest our money into their content, and because we provide the demand for the media. And to me, this creates a level of expectation which we should hold game devs accountable to at all costs. If they're going to charge us X amount of dollars for their game, it should at least provide an X amount of dollars quality of content and gameplay. And these are in, aren't entirely unrealistic standards in my opinion, but obviously not every game is going to succeed and meet our expectations and everyone will have a different opinion of a game. Not everyone is going to think one game met all the expectations that they wanted, but one other person might think the game was honestly perfect. And these expectations should be upheld for any and every game that we as gamers consume. Now, big name game devs are easier for us to target. Because they're a bigger name, they have a bigger budget. And with that bigger budget comes bigger expectations, and a higher demand for better results. And also because of them being a big name, it's easier for us to target them if they do mess up because they're more prominent in our everyday lives and in everyday gaming news. And some have consistent great successes like Nintendo, while others churn out garbage so often that they become a meme. Even game devs for free games should be held accountable. Riot Games with League of Legends have expectations to provide good content with every release and to fix the issues along the way with patches. Small game devs too are no exception. One example that I want to come to is with Day of Dragons, which was a very recent catastrophe. So it was described as an online creature survival sandbox PC game set in a large, beautiful open world with multiple biomes. It's a cool concept to begin with and people surviving and killing each other as dragons is a great idea which I'm pretty sure a lot of people would love. Do you want to know how many people loved it? This game started on Kickstarter with a goal of $12,000 and received $533,948 from 12,123 backers. The consumers obviously wanted to believe in this project, and they knew that it could be something amazing and beautiful, just like it described, and they wanted to provide funding to make it the best that it could possibly be on release. So what did Be Awesome Games, a no-name company, a no-name developer do? Day of Dragons ended up being a dumpster fire of a disaster. It did receive a 6 out of 10 on Steam, which isn't horrible. But the issues were overwhelmingly glaring. It was riddled with issues from the character models to the environment. And quite frankly, very little original content such as the character skeletons were actually used in the making of the game. These character models were not developed by the game dev themselves. And there were other contents in this game that were not developed by the game devs themselves. And the overall outcry is that the game is incomplete and needs to be updated or even receive a borderline complete overhaul. And the issues still have yet to be significantly fixed to this day, despite being out for months. And the game devs have blatantly refused to have clear communications with their player base. No one is answering any questions with any real answers, and the game devs originally, at the beginning of their release, blatantly refused to speak with any critics that didn't have positive feedback on the game. They would literally only talk to any critic, quote unquote critic, because honestly I don't know if these are actual people that they talked to who weren't just paid off, like, they wouldn't talk 
to anyone who wouldn't give positive feedback, which is, in my opinion, incredibly corrupt and something that should not be permissible. Essentially, what it all boils down to is that Be Awesome Games with Day of Dragons took the money that they got and ran. So what does this tell us? Game devs need to be, have open communications with their players. It's one thing if they openly admit to the issues in communication, it's another thing if they blatantly refuse to say anything at all. And game devs should, at minimum, produce quality content proportionate to the support that it gets, especially when the consumer money is invested even before buying the game. Day of Dragons received nearly 45 times its requested funding and therefore should have produced higher and better, better quality content. And yes, this is a small, no-name company that has had zero records of making any good games before or any games at all. But with these types of funds from this many people, what legitimate excuses can they provide for us that can legitimize their behavior in dealing with this game and their players. And the end product was so horrible that some backers looked to actually get a refund on Kickstarter. And I'm pretty sure that none of them have gotten any money back. And I don't see using unoriginal content as ever being excusable. If you were going to develop a game on your own or as a big game company, just take the time and effort to use original content rather than ripping it off from somewhere else. And producing good content should be the top priority, not just top profits. A game made with top quality intentions will always make top profits. A good game makes good money. This is common sense. It shouldn't be this difficult for game devs to understand. A lot of different companies get this right with the content that they produce. But still we get instances like this where greed ends up being the downfall of a game. A game made with top profits as its sole intention will always lead to incidents similar to this. Where the game, although promising so much to begin with at the start of its development, ends up being an absolute flop and it ends up being just god awful for anyone to try to legitimately play and it is a waste in the end of our money, our time, and our energy. What I really want to do with this video is not just start up a conversation between you, our viewers, and us, your content creators. I want this to start up a dialogue between we as the gaming community as a whole with our game developers so that in the future we don't have instances like this. We don't waste our time. We don't waste our money. And we don't waste our energy on promises that end up being broken in the end. Because quite frankly, it's a form of heartbreak. The game devs hurt us. The game devs fail us. And quite frankly, that hurts more than anything else. When we wanted to believe in what they were doing, we supported them from step one to the end game of their development of the game, and we still get treated like nothing more than mindless cash cows. Alright guys, this has been Chadling with Yukon Gaming Club YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you an opportunity to really think about your relationship with game devs in general and how you want your gaming community to look in the future and how you want it to be better now. Feel free to hit the like button and subscribe and I hope to see you guys next time.